Hey guys, so I thought I would go ahead and show you guys the look I would consider my no makeup makeup look. And this is a look that I wear when I work essentially because it's quick and it's fast. I have to be to work at 6.30 in the morning so when I get up in the morning I want it to be something that's fast and quick. So I just thought I would go ahead and show you guys. Um, I'm not wearing any makeup right now. Um, you can see that my face isn't the greatest right now. I don't know if you're going to be able to see it because of the light. As you can see, like, my forehead along my brow is, is um, breaking out. Not, I wouldn't really say that it, it's not that it's breaking out. It's more that some of it is old scarring marks. Like, I can still feel the ones right here. No problem. Down here is all smooth. I don't know if you're going to be able to see it, but it's very discolored. Overall, my face is, um, not even. Very scarred and discolored. So, whenever I start out my routine, I always do my eyes first. And that is habit. Some people do their foundation first and then do their eye makeup. I do my eye makeup first. And I got into that habit because if I was going to do a smoky look or anything that involves darker shadows and fallout were to occur and you already did your foundation, kind of ruining your foundation. Yes, you can just sweep it away, but I, I just got into the habit of liking to do my makeup first so that if I did get too much darkness under here that when I put my foundation on, it wipes it away or covers it up or whatever. <laughs> and there's no right or wrong way. It's however you like it. So, I always put primer on my eyes. And for the most part, when I go to work, um, I wear one face color. I don't do the whole crease business because it takes longer. And when I get up at 5.20 in the morning, I don't feel like doing all that. A lot of times I'll just wear the MAC paint pot and bear study or I wear those Urban Decay pencils, eyeshadow pencils to talk about and lit or Midnight Cowboy. But I'll just put this on for right now. So I just put this on the lid and it just brightens. Put a brighter color on your lid. It helps to open up your eye more. My eyelids are dry. I can tell by putting this on that they look dry. And it's from, it's probably from the primer, wearing primer all the time dry. I feel like dries my lids out. But. Oh well. So, so light color, nothing special. Like I said, it's fast for me in the morning. And then liner, which I'm actually just gonna use this mirror because if I lean too far forward, you guys aren't gonna see me. <laughs> this is the um. Makeup Forever, new ones that they have out. I like it, it really stays well. I'm not a big fan of felt tip pens though, because they don't move and I tend to mess up. I tend to mess up more on the felt tip pens than the, the movable ones like the hairs. Okay. Next step is curling and mascara. Next step after that, um, after curling is the mascara. So, I tend, I usually always use two mascaras when I'm doing one that lengthens and one that adds more volume, plus the primer. So I'm gonna use the Urban Decay Eyelid Primer. I love this one, I've used this for a while now. I have a backup in my closet <laughs> and I have I always use the lengthening one first before the volumizing I've just noticed that that works better for me Too Faced Lash Gasm and then the L'Oreal Carbon Black Luminous so do my primer first wonder if you guys can I wonder if I hope my mirror is not in the way 
This one's starting to dry out. I feel like I need to throw this one out and get my back up out of the closet because it feels a little more dry. So that, and they always say don't wait for it to dry. I used to wait for it to dry and then I learned that you're not supposed to do that. And then the Too Faced Lash Gasm. And when I first used this one, I absolutely hated it. And I've noticed that with mascaras, whenever I try something, a new mascara out, I always end up hating it in the beginning and thinking, oh my god, I'm never going to use this again. But what I've come to discover is the reason why I don't like it in the beginning is because it's usually too wet and it needs to dry out a little more. And that's what happened with this. I used this one the first time and it clumped so bad on me. And now it doesn't do that anymore. Okay, we're done with that. And then the last one. I know it's a lot, it seems like a lot. It just tends to make your lashes look the best this way. Whoops, I got some on my face. It's okay, because I haven't put my foundation on yet. <laughs> And then I always use the volumizing one on the bottom. And there's something that I forgot doing the bottom lashes. I forgot to add a regular liner to the bottom of my lashes. Here it is. So usually with, for tight lining or the bottom lashes, I use the Stila smudge stick waterproof ones. I'm done my eye makeup. Pretty simple. This is the no makeup makeup look, so you don't want to have it be too much. Moving on to foundation, I already put I already put my oil control lotion on, which acts as my primer. So we're good to go with that. Make sure you moisturize your face, wash, moisturize your face before you do foundation. And my oil control lotion acts as my moisturizer. So oh, I'm moving ahead without telling you what I'm doing. I'm gonna put on the makeup forever matte velvet. This one seems to work the best with not creating shine on me, when, especially when you work 12 hour shifts, like I do. I notice that I don't have to blot as much. And I'm going to use the Eco Tools, uh, I think this is the bronzing brush, but there is no way I would use this for bronzer, because... <laughs> It's way too fat of a brush. I mean, that's ridiculous. Look, it takes up my whole side of my face. That would put way too much bronzer on, in my opinion. But it works amazing for liquid. I've never tried powder with it. It's like a medium, medium coverage, I'd say. But it covers very well. It helps even me out a lot. And you can always build it, so I've been told. I forgot to put some on my neck. Hold on. Because you want to make sure that you're even. And after that, ooh, do concealer. Sometimes I end up putting powder on and then put concealer on. But sometimes it's just because I forgot. Um, so since I have marks up here on my face that you can still see because, it's pe because they're healing and they're peeling. Like this one's peeling pretty bad. I put concealer over them because they're red. And I'm using their Urban Decay 24 7 pencil in it, an NSA, which is the darkest one they have, which is funny because I'm not that dark. I love this pencil, it stays so well. And I'm a little dark under here today, so I'll put some under here too. Why not? Just to brighten me up. Okay, powder time. So what I've been using a lot, you can use a translucent powder if you don't want to have any more coverage, or you can use a foundation powder. It's totally up to you. I have been using a foundation powder lately, and I've been using the Makeup Forever Matte Duo, or Duo Matte, excuse me, in 203. 
Oh, by the way, the foundation, the, the Makeup Forever Velvet Matte foundation for me is in 35? 35. And I've actually hit pan on this, which is funny because I didn't buy it that long ago, and recently I've just been using it a lot. your neck. Okay. So that's done. So next we would do bronzer. And let's see. I'll use my chocolate soleil one. That one's the most natural on me. Palette right here. And it's just a matte bronzer. Load it up. What I do when I put my bronzer on is I move my... If I'm going to do this side of my face, I move my mouth to the opposite side. And then what that does is it helps to define your bone so you can see where you want the bronzer to go. Pretty much it's right along the bone underneath of it. And up. I just do the sides of my neck. I don't go down the middle. I tend to feel like that looks a little more natural. And I always do my hairline because that tends to be where you're most dark because that's the, the highest point where the sun sits on you. I don't wear blush when I do the, this look only because I feel like it's it takes away from the no makeup makeup looks and look, makes you look a little more... I don't know what the word is. A little more like done up, I would say, because I feel like I wear blush when I go out and stuff. It's not blush isn't something that I wear every day. Because I feel like it's kind of noticeable that you wear blush. For me, at least. I'm sure other people don't notice that kind of stuff, but I notice that kind of stuff. And the last step is the Urban Decay G Slick Setting Spray. Love this stuff. We were taught that when you do it, you do a cross and then an X. I spray until I feel like it's good, and I'll follow that whole thing. I just spray, 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 spray. Make sure to close your eyes, and I and I try not to breathe when I do this because I feel like this is probably not the best thing to inhale. So I hold my breath. I forgot lips. Hold on. <laughs> so a lot of the times I will just wear like a lip gloss, or a lot of times I notice I'm grabbing for this when I go to work is the Tarte lip tint. And this is in Glisten, and it's like a peachy color. And that's that, I guess. Um, like I said, it's something that when I have to get up at 5.20 in the morning, it has to be quick for me. It has to be fast because I don't want to have to get up any earlier than that to have to do more makeup. For, and it also has to last for me because I work a 12-hour shift. So, um, like I said, the important thing for me is using the right foundation when I work a 12-hour shift. And the Matte Velvet Duo, or I'm sorry, the Matte Velvet Plus, for me, seems to keep me shine-free the longest. Which means it just requires less, t less, less blotting throughout the day, or less touch-ups. And it, a lot of it comes down to you have to figure out what is going to work for you. But, I mean, a lot of people don't have to work 12-hour shifts, so... <laughs> Well, I hope you guys like this, and I will talk to you later.